It's early morning, just after sunrise, and the disciples are beginning to wake up. You can imagine Peter rushing all around, all agitated, shouting too loud for this early hour. Hey, guys, does anybody know where Jesus is? I can't find him anywhere. And then you can imagine Thomas or John replying, settle down, Peter. He's probably off in the hills praying again. If I'd been among those original disciples, I probably would have wondered, what does he do when he gets up early and spends all those hours praying? I say that because... For most of my life, the word prayer made me cringe with feelings of guilt and incompetence. It wasn't always like that. My mother remembers the first time she saw me pray as a little boy. I had caught a frog and put it in a glass jar in the garage. Every day I brought it bugs to eat, but one day I didn't put the top on tightly enough and the well-fed little frog jumped out and hopped away. When I discovered the empty jar, I started running around the yard, frantically looking everywhere for my lost pet. My mother was watching from the kitchen window. Eventually, she saw me stop, fold my hands as I'd been taught in Sunday school, and pray. My prayer wasn't answered. My frog didn't magically reappear in his jar as I wished. But I found some comfort in the act of asking for just that. As I got older, Prayer started to feel less like a comfort and more like yet another way to fail as a Christian. In church and on the radio and in books, I was constantly being told to pray more, more, more. Pray more often, pray more passionately, pray more effectively, more confidently, with more faith or more theological correctness. Prayer became an ever higher bar that I had to jump over, and I always fell short. 